this is really funny. So we're going to actually be looking at this. How did we go from being a Neanderthal in a cave to being a human? Homo sapiens, what we are today. So in the series, uh, Are Humans Animals? Comparing Humans to Animals, this is where we're at in the stage right here. From orangutan and apes, and we're going to be looking at those fossils, to Neanderthals and the species that created, that end up coming out and making man. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> I thought this was very interesting article here's why it's moronic to suggest that homo erectus was lazy because after all a lot of these monkeys cave dweller men were lounging around in caves and things like that and so um you've probably seen a headline or two touting a new discovery about our long extinct relative homo erectus according to a recent study some outlets claim laziness may have contributed to the extinction of our predecessors but the study this is a study in journal plus one. Okay, very prevalent study. The inference that the laziness, that the Homo erectus was lazy, is moronic. This is Neil Roach, a biological anthropologist at Harvard University. There's a lot of evidence pointing to Homo erectus as anything but lazy. The species survived for more than 1.5 million years. That's pretty impressive compared to our measly 300,000 years or so on Earth. And look at what we're doing. We're killing ourselves. We've evolved to kill ourselves faster. They may have been one of the first species to migrate out of Africa, this guy says. And, um, you know, we're going to get into Africa and how Africa was a, a wetland. That's where we were all hanging out at. But um, we'll get to that later. We, they, these, these creatures were technologically conservative and that they used the least efforts to survive, the least effort strategies to survive using the greatest technology had, they had at the time. If you look at what we're doing right now, it's essentially the same thing. You can compare it to exactly where we're at today. Laziness. But no, no, no. They used it to survive and that's where we're going to evolve to. That's where it's all coming from. That's where it's all going, right? <clears throat> this is what I was getting to challenging the African human origin hypothesis, a new fossil from Turkey in Turkey, an ape fossil found in Turkey suggests that the ancestors of African apes and humans first evolved in Europe before going to Africa. So that is a huge blow in theory. And we're going to get into, we're going to get into how they, how, how this all weaves together as, as a great story. And how the, the public and the atheists, these people, can fall privy to it. 8.7 million year old site in central Anatolia dubbed the species Anadolu, Anadoluvius turkey. Okay, and we're going to be looking at these fossils. This is what they got out. If you're... In this line of thinking, the theory of evolution, you look at these fossils and you can kind of like in the movies map it out with your imagination where this all could have come from with the images, right? Very interesting. Our findings, this is Professor David Bagan at the University of Toronto's Department of Anthropology. This is in a press release. Our findings further suggest that hominins not only evolved in Western and Central Europe, but spent over 5 million years evolving there. They spent over 5 million years evolving in this wetland in Africa we're going to get to. Just sitting there hanging out in jacuzzis and, and hanging out in, in caves and, and just playing. And, you know, it was actually some of them survived in really hot, sculptering heat and others came from Africa and wetland. It's anyway, we'll get to all that. It's a very interesting story. The robust jaws and thickly enameled teeth hint at a diet involving hard food items akin to the dietary patterns of human of early humans in Africa. So it went from vegetation to us eating meats, fish. 
The fossil ape coexisted with a range of animals familiar in modern African grasslands to dry forests. So these bones were found with giraffes' bones, warthogs, rhinos, antelopes, zebras, elephants, porcupines, hyenas, all these type of lion-like carnivores. These bones were all found together, mixed together. And you'll see <clears throat> that is a prevalent theme throughout this theory of evolution. As this, as this story continues to unfold, it serves as a reminder that the path of evolution is more intricate and intriguing than we previously imagined. In the ever-evolving narrative of human history, each discovery brings us closer to comprehending the diverse and captivating journey that has led us to where we are today. Can you imagine all the different species of humans and things that are out there? That we haven't even found yet. This just came out. This brand new news. Not too long ago. 2019. In the, in, in, the, in the jolting speed of science. I don't know. This could be old. But here we are. A powdery white layer blankets the desiccated land of Botswana. It's one of the world's largest flatlands. But 200,000 200, years ago. The flatland, this would have been a, a wetland full of beautiful animals and a marshland. And just enough for people to live. Just enough. And for a little humanoid animal apes walking around. This, 200,000 years ago, is painted in blues and greens and flourishing wetland set in the middle of a harsh desert in South southern Africa. The lush landscape would have been an appealing place for early humans to call home. The researchers... The researchers studied, and this is very interesting, the researchers studied mitochondri mitochondrial DNA, genetic material stored in powerhouses of our cells that has passed from mother to child, of current residences, and we get we get to talk about that in the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, okay, video. So they take this DNA of current residents across southern Africa, Africa. then they layer this genetic data, okay, with past climate and modern linguistics as well as cultural and geographic distributions of local populations so lots of data strung together and that's how the story we talked about a filing cabinet in previous videos and it's a filing cabinet and they're just putting a bunch of information in the filing cabinet it's a never-ending filing cabinet and they're calling it a story and that's what we're doing and they're let they're, they're overlapping data on top of data on top of data it's a never-ending entertainment circus it's never ending and never ending the study's results suggest that shifts in climate allowed branches of the ancient population to spread from the wetland to newly formed zones of green thousands of years later and we're gonna and and, and this next point i'm gonna make here Thousands of years later, a small population of these wanderers kin eventually would have leave would have left Africa and ultimately inhabit every corner of the world. So Africa was a wetland. It was a beautiful wetland. It wasn't anything like it is today. It was a beautiful wetland at one point. And then at some point these ape creatures decided to go to green land green lands as Africa was drying up. Okay? Keep that in mind. That's exactly what's that's saying there, okay? It's important to remember that while humans like to put everything in boxes nature doesn't fit into tiny into tidy categories there are no distinct lines between one species and the next this is what um Schlebosch in this article i'm sure he's a doctorate i'm sure you know i'm sure he's doing something fantastic with all this but this is what his this is what he's saying okay there's no distinct lines between one species and the next. Everything works in shades of gray. And this is why this video, comparing humans and animals, we are all made of the same stuff. The first video in this series talks about that. The controversy of our origins will, will surely continue. This is, what the, this, is the, this is the journalist now. This is the article ending. Unlike many fields of study, human evolution is something you can... You, you, I'm sorry... Unlike many fields of study, human evolution is not something you can design experiments to test. Isn't that exactly what the scientific theory is all about? 
What is going on here, right? It is madness. This in itself is madness. The scientific theory is thrown out the window when we're talking about any of this, and they admit it right there. Boom. Unlike many fields of study, human evolution is something you can't, that you that you cannot design experiments to test. But then again, perhaps scientists need to rethink the, the debate entirely. Maybe. And that's what we're doing here. So human ancestors nearly went extinct a million years ago. As we sit here today, this is what they're saying. This is the new studies coming out. Human ancestors were nearly went extinct a million years ago. And in, and in fact, less than 1,300 individuals survived. The population of breeding individuals was, was reduced to just less than 1,300 and didn't expand again for another 117,000 years. So the 1,300 group of humans for nearly 120,000 years, they really didn't reproduce. Go look at the video, The Theory of Evolution, the Reptilian Human Brain Explained. And we talk about how when we were crawling out of the sea and we becoming reptilian and we had that repti the reptilian part of our brain would not have done so well with this type of behavior with this type of non-breeding we wouldn't you know wouldn't be so hot hai peng ling a population geneticist at the university of chinese academic of sciences of beijing he's the one that put this study together okay we're looking at communism and this is what's coming out it's from beijing right so be very careful that's why we're looking at the theory of evolution and then we're matching it up to the bible as we're comparing all these things to find a standard there has to be a standard and I'm talking to the atheist that is watching this. Nick Ashton, an archaeologist at the British Museum in London. This is what he says after all of this. This would imply that it, these, these apes, occupied a very localized area with a good social cohesion for it to survive. Meaning diversity, what we're doing, what we're experimenting with is what, you know, not doing so hot. They were very good at melding together. Of greater surprise, it is estimated the length of time that this small group survived. What's greater what's what's greater than that, okay? If this is correct, one imagines that it would require a stable environment with sufficient resources and few stresses to the system. So what we're gonna show here that as we look at these theories, these men, navel gazers, all they're doing, common sense always rules out. And common sense always looks at these this new miraculous discovery with the DNA and the, and the, ape, hay, and the ape head and fossils and dinosaurs. There's always common sense. There's always another side of it. These scientists who are all buying into these lies, always pointing out on the other side, that's ridiculous. Every single time. Around 813 years ago, the population of prehumans began to swell again. How our ancestors managed to survive and what allowed them to flourish once more remains unclear. Ashton would like to see the researchers' findings backed by more archaeological and fossil evidence. The author suggests that the bottleneck was a global crash in population, meaning the sudden decimation of humans, these ape creatures, bringing about these 1,300 colonists. That bottleneck was a global crash in population. It was dis destructive. But the number of archaeological sites outside Africa suggests that this is not the case. A regional bottleneck, bottleneck might be more likely. So... What they're saying here is this really is just a little tiny piece. It's just a little tiny piece of the whole evolution theory. This, I mean, we're going to go through how many years, 900,000 years, 300,000 years, 100,000 years, 1.5 million years. It's insane. So the evolution theory of the human monkey brain, as they compare these Neanderthal brains and these monkey ape brains and whatnot, well, they try to conjure up neanderthal brains and the, their models and stuff with with um illustrations and we're gonna get into all that the warning signs at the end how they try to get away with this uh it doesn't even match up it doesn't even match up it doesn't even make sense ancient dna puts a face on the mysterious denisovans and extinct cousins of the neanderthals 
For more than 10 years, these close cousins of Neanderthals have identified only by their DNA in a handful of scrappy fossils. Ludovic Orlando, a molecular archaeologist at the University of Copenhagen who wasn't involved in the work, calls the approach clever. But he and others caution against making spe um, species-wide generalizations based on a single individual. We just got done talking about that. It is insane. This theory, they're cautioning against it right here. We should caution against that because it's clever. Right. Okay. I'm not trying to be such a jerk here. It's just uh, perhaps 600,000 years ago, the lineage that led to modern humans split from one that led to Neanderthals and Denisovians. So what they're saying here, 900,000 years ago, we should have gone extinct, according to what that one scientist says. What the consensus says, perhaps, or what this person is saying, perhaps 600,000 years ago. There's a huge gap there. It's 300,000 years. That's just one. The lineage that led to modern humans split from one that led to Neanderthals and Denisovians. So now we're talking about the 1300 that we just spoke about. Now we're talking about that. Do you understand how they've pigeonholed themselves from Neanderthals and Denisovians? Now they've got, now they got only 1300 bones, which they've only found one. 1300 different human bones somewhere laying around that they have to go find now, in order to make their theory work. Does that make sense? That's how insane this is. But I'll show you how the con works, the fraud. Then about 400,000 years ago, Denisovans and Neanderthals split themselves into separate branches. Denisovans ranged from, from, uh, Denisovans ranged from Serbia to Southeast Asia and may have persisted, blah, 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 blah. Okay. If you were to find a single Homo sapiens fossil and it's an NBA basketball player, then you might conclude that the Homo sapiens were seven feet tall. This is what... Gabriel Renouard, a bioinformation bio at the University of Copenhagen, is what he says. So it's an interesting approach, but we can't verify the predictions until several Denisovian skeletons are found. Remember I was telling you that that theme, okay, common sense always wins. And then once you look at the common sense, you go, yeah, that's right. Jesus Christ's word always wins. Always. That's how you know who wins? Denisovan fossil finger. This is how they find out the Denisovans. Okay. This. Okay. They came. They found a pinky bone. This is the pinky bone that they found. The green and the that's a model, and we're gonna get into the warning signs and how they model things out to create these stories, like the. But that's what they found, and they said, you know, because of that and a few teeth. We're going to create this whole new storyline in these evolutionary tales. DNA can tell us a lot about how species are related to each other, but we still need to look at the bones because 48 chromosomes, 47 chromosomes, these types of things that separate is 46, 45. That's not enough to tell us. We have to look at the bones to understand how particular traits changed. When a digital Reconstruction of the finger bone, Bennett and his colleagues had enough evidence to say that the bone had come from the right hand and to conclude that the girl now called Denisova was between 13 and 14 years old when she died. And they could find that out from the bone. So I think that the person that rendered this out that drew this, I think that they saw too many YouTube videos of this little girl. Because I remember it was a huge popular thing. Don't, don't you think? Look. Don't you think? I think so. Proverbs 18.4 The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. It is not good to accept the persons of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calleth for strokes a fool's lips wants to battle it wants okay and it calls for strokes it calls to a battle a fool's mouth also is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul the words of a talebearer as wounds and they go down in the innermost parts of the belly he also that is slothful in his work and these people that put these theories together very slothful people, and I'll make a reference here very soon. He also is slothful in his work, 
is a bother to him and he's a great waster that's what the, the they're navel gazers people that just they navel gaze and that's how they make their money i mean they, they have they have all the luxury they don't have to go make money or anything like that. they got all the slaves or whatever and so all they do is they create stories and then they pass those stories down on to other people that's what we're seeing here so i can't remember which video it is but it was a really obese man i think it's this the theory of evolution the primordial fish human yes very obese man he he loved his lobster and he cut his lobster in half and he saw the insides and goes oh that looks similar to what we see in illustrations from the scientific community that's evolution and then he created a tale and boom here we go we got the primordial fish human story that's the truth so here we go neanderthals here we go the neanderthal human connection more now we're going to just show just how, how silly it all is and who these people are that created these stories, who they really are. Look at all these different faces. Tattoos. That's why we got tattoos because the Neanderthals figured out how to do that and it was tribal. And nah! Anyway. So here we go. This is the man that the Neanderthal story and everything. This is who he is. He's a, he's a fraud. The professor... Professor Reiner Port Proch von Zeiten, a 30-year-old academic career is now ended in disgrace after the revelation that he systematically falsified the dates on his numerous Stone Age relics. And look at what look at what's happened to society. All these people that have been been that have been told this in school. <laughs> do you under, now the world? Do you understand the world is crazy because it's nothing. It's all lies right now. It's all lies. Yesterday, his university in Frankfurt announced that the, presser had, that the professor had been forced to retire because of numerous falsehoods and manipulations. According to experts, his deceptions may mean an entire tranche of his hum history of man's development. So everything has to be rewritten. Everything that happened with human in history has to be rewritten. Anthropology is going to have to completely revise its picture of modern man between 40,000 and 10,000 years ago. And much more than that because we just got done talking about all the little holes they've got. His work appeared to prove that anatomically modern humans and Neanderthals had coexisted and perhaps even had children together. This now appears to be rubbish. This scandal only came to light when his fossils, his chimpanzee skull collection, they were trying to sell it here in the U.S. And that's when they figured it out. What a joke. Again, isn't it funny? You always see common sense always wins out. They always find out, wait, this doesn't make sense. You can get more information on the theory of evolution up to the human brain explained. Okay. Now, this is the um, Nebraska man or the Piltdown man. So this comes out of the newspaper. People see this, the before and after. This is what we're seeing on the left-hand side. This is what we're seeing here without a rewind device and our VHS machine. Once we do that... <laughs> On the right-hand side, we have a pig tooth and a monkey skull. Wait, no, that's not it. We have a Neanderthal. Okay, it's silly. This is what they say. This is the Piltdown Man forgery. Briefly, the conclusions of these scientists is that though the fragments of the cranium are genuine remains of primitive man, meaning an ape, an orangutan, not a Denisovan, not a Neanderthal, but just an ape, a monkey. Let me read that again. Briefly, the conclusion of these scientists is that though the fragments of the cranium are genuine remains of primitive man, the large piece of mandible and the separate canine tooth are actually those of modern ape, deliberately faked to simulate fossil specimens. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's just, they just repeat themselves. The fossils are of an ape and they are actually of an ape. I'm sorry. This is the pig tooth, I think. Yep. The history of Yep, here we go. The Nebraska man was a fossil discovery that was regarded by several leading experts as an important understanding of evolution history. The only evidence for this anthropod was a single tooth, which turned out to be a pig's tooth. But it had extra enamel on it. it had extra enamel on it. Nebraska man provides a valuable lesson on the importance of presumptions and in interpreting evidence in the field of human origins. It also stresses the need for careful evaluation of empirical evidence, yada, yada, yada. What does this all have in common? get rich quick get rich quick because they they don't these men they weren't raised maybe i don't know maybe they were raised but they had a bunch of hypocrites raising them 
they got God's word and they ran away. I don't know. But it's get rich and then die. Get rich quick. Get rich quick scheme. Charge them, 1 Timothy 6, 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may that they may lay hold on eternal life. And this is for the rich man. You guys go tell the rich man these things. Laying up in store for themselves. Lay up in the... Lay up a good foundation. This is for everybody, not just a rich person. Lay up a good foundation against the time to come that you have eternal life. When the time is here, that you will get that prize. You will get that reward. And I'm going to explain to you how that's done here in a minute. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. How do we keep away from science, science falsely so-called? Well, that's what we're doing right now. We're talking about that. And you have to run underneath the umbrella, the safety, the kingship of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to ask him to be your savior. You have to ask him to be your king. You have to ask him to be your God to show you. And he will show you. That's the first part of wisdom. It's not Buddha. It's not Joel Osteen in the prosperity gospel. It's not It's not what any of these guys are telling you. It's not even what I'm telling you right now. It's not my words, what you get from it. It's what God wants you to understand. Because I'm a faulty. I mess up. To keep away from these things. Avoid profane and vain babblings. Have you ever sat down and listened when these people talk? It's just, it's a headache. It is disgusting. It's like, it's so, like, you just want to run away. It's horrible. It's a headache. Humans, because there's a lot of luxury and a lot of time, humans use storytelling and these types of things. And that's okay. That's fine. That's great. But it's not under the imagination of Christ. In fact, they're not hindering their imagination. We get to that in other videos, and that's the perp that's why we're here. Here we go. This is the Lucy. This is how insane this misinformation is out there. Researchers, Sabidia is not a human ancestor after all. Back to Lucy. Okay, this is the Lucy. So they found this ape fossil, you know, skeleton, and then they decided to put a different pelvis or different, you know, thigh in there, some a couple different bones, and they forged it. And they said this is this is the part of the evolution. Well, here we go. This is, Lucy isn't straightforward candidate either. Statistical analysis of fossil data shows that it is unlikely that it happened at all. <laughs> But that the ape-like fossil from South Africa is the direct ancestor of the Homo sapien, the genus, uh, the genus to which modern-day humans belong to. So that doesn't work. Temporal evidence shows it is unlikely. Okay, once again. Okay. So that's just by statistical data analysis, by them just crunching numbers and things. But here we go. This is brand new. This is June 13, 2023. 3.2 million year old human ancestor Lucy had massive leg muscles to stand up straight and climb trees. So, yeah. And how many people are going to be saying this? How many people are going to be saying this lie now? You know what I'm talking about? Our 3.2 million year old ancestor Lucy could stand up and walk upright just like modern humans do with new 3D muscle modeling reveals. And that's that's key. They use the computers and everything. In, the, in previous videos, you can go look at this. They use the computers now to just crunch data so that they can create more stories to fill in their gaps, fill in their their holes in their and their plot. Lucy's muscles suggest that she was as proficient as humans by climbing trees. She lived in both environments, climbing trees and on ground. While soft tissue is not visible in the fossil record, scientists can piece together what extinct species muscles may have looked like by using modern humans as analogs. That doesn't work. Remember, we talked about this. 
evolution theory, the human monkey brain. It doesn't work. Yeah, we're made of the same stuff, but everything's designed totally differently. And human beings are brilliant creations, brilliant creatures made in the image of the creator. Children. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And that's why I'm calling my, my I'm, I'm asking my Christians brothers and my sisters and the, and the pastors, it's, you know, ring the alarm bell. We need to talk about creation. We need to take over this fear now immediately. This is the number one religion for the Antichrist. And we're going to get into imagination. And atheists are, that are watching me, keep watching. And we're going to get into imagination. In fact, we talked about the brain. Oh, it's coming out in the series because I don't know. I'm making these beforehand and I'm, pre I'm doing a premiere. But one of the videos that are going to be coming out is talking about the neurons in your brain. And how did that evolve and how brilliant that is. So... Uh, what am I trying to get at? Just, you know, we, we need to take back. We need to take it back. And, and you know, imagination and God. God's not imagination. He's the, he's the most ultimate. What people, I don't like to say this, but, you know, high is what they would call it. It's not that. It is, it is like the most amazing what people call dopamine rush. It's beyond that. God is, is amazing. There's times where, anyway, we're going to get right back into this. Uh, Romans 12, 3. For I say, though the grace... Though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, to not, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one in are one body in Christ, and every one member one to another, having then gifts. Differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. So we have gifts. Everybody has gifts. As you're listening to me, you Christian that's hearing me, you have a gift. Use it for God, whatever it is. What if you? It doesn't matter if um, I have a friend and I, I don't. His name is uh, anyway. He's got. He's he does videos on things that you know that just you would think is distracting, but God can use all of that to give wisdom to the people that are in that because it's not that being involved in distractions of the world makes you horrible and whatnot it just means that hey listen it's different than me i decide not to do that but he's you know living a good christian life i pray to god that he is and you know using those things to give glimmers of hopes and wisdom and give godly wisdom to those people at right times can be it can be a beautiful thing that can be used great and it's a gift So, or ministry, let us do ministering, or he that teaches, teach, or he that exhorts, exhorteth. Let it do, let it be in simplicity. Let us do it with love and rule and diligence and simplicity and do it out of cheerfulness. And it doesn't matter if 10 people watch a video. I make a video on YouTube and five people watch it. Okay, great. One person might get something out of that. And you never know what that one person is going to do with that wisdom that God used, that nugget, that seed that was planted or that watering. So this is another thing there. They, they use their, you know, they, they're men of prestige and money and they use their talents to, uh, create stories. This is an illustration. Remember the Heiko file, the fraud. Okay. The embryo, the human embryo, how they're all the same. That's how it proves evolution. And this is his illustration. That's how I'm, that's his illustration right here. Okay. I don't want to get into that. I want to end this. But this is this man. All he was is a good illustrator. This is what it really looks like. When you compare these embryos, so on the bottom, the salamander human rabbit, that is the drawings of this man saying this is, you know, proving evolution. The embryos on the top are exactly what they really look like. You tell me who the fraud is. You tell me why people, and this is just one lie out of the many I've pointed out and the many that are come and the many that are left behind. So scientists grow a whole model of human embryo without using, you know, without using male and female biological mechanisms that God has put in us. That's just one. And they're not going to be able to do much. They're not going to be able to do much. And it's just like implanting, you know, um, uh, a pig's heart 
you know, into a human. It's not going to last very long. So all this stuff, they're just studying it. They're studying God's creation. And so in, in order to get the population behind this storytelling, they have to get you to sold on it. That's why having Christ is going to do amazing things with your financial life, everything, because you won't get caught up in all this stuff. You know, another simulation hints at how climate shaped human migration. Well, now you have to now you have to look at Africa and the and the fossils that came out of Turkey. I mean, you know, it's a lot of data. You know what I mean? It's it's forever. It's forever storytelling. You know, this this is an animation, just like with the bones and and the imagination that they can. Okay, well, now this bird that they found is going to forever change how how birds evolved and do you now now they have all these books and they can make these new books and they can have people buy these new books based on this new drawing and this new theory and then people have to buy that and then you know two years one year later they have to buy you know new theories and new books come out and everybody buys that do you understand the circuit it's and it's a forever economy and that's what these communists want they want slaves forever slaves that have no thought no process and you have you have synthetic dopamine rushes from video games and and you have total freedom with christ you want to play video games your whole life but and be with christ fantastic you'll know not to hurt people you'll know not to do things that will destroy other people's souls that's why we're talking about the standard here you understand the atheists that are watching we're talking about a standard here and as you get closer to the standard, once you get more information and you go, wow, this makes sense. The more you delve into God's word, the more you're going to be like, whoa, yes, I get it now. For the Christian that's watching, uh, get the material out there. You know, don't, go, don't get the material out there. It's better that you say these things. It's better that you learn and that you say these things. And study and, and and don't be fearful. Ask God questions. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ questions. Ask him for truth. He's amazing. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. John 8.32, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is, Ye he is Jehovah. He is Yahweh. He is Jesus Christ. He's Alpha and Omega. He is the King of kings, Lord and Lords. 